Hey guys, Victor here coming to you with another deck profile and today's focus is going to be on Synchro Tier Element which is one of the hallmarks of this channel as it's something that I'm constantly showing off to try and I guess help people that want to play Tier Element but don't really want to focus on like the standard stuff such as the Horus Tier Element version which is something that you're pretty much going to see every single time whenever you look up Tier Element deck profile. Uh, you know, it's always important to have alternatives just to fully express yourself I guess or just try out different things because the same thing can honestly be pretty boring sometimes uh now i'm not gonna lie the recent list did hurt this deck somewhat significantly with the banning of baron de floor because it, it does a couple of things one we don't have like an easy omni negate that we can pretty much just drop at any moment uh, and two since we don't have that card anymore um cards like revolution synchron do lose some of their i guess versatility right because we can no longer go special fenrir search tier cash normal revolution synchro for baron and then ensure that the rest of our plays are going to be protected for the rest of this turn however we're going to persevere despite those changes and hopefully you know this deck is still pretty good kicking <laughs> and uh yeah with that out of the way let's just jump straight into the deck profile now as always we're going to be starting off with the monster lineup and there's no better monster to start off this deck profile with than tournament's rhino heart which we are of course going to be playing at three um not much to say i guess previously in like the synchro versions you'd only see me be playing two of this card but with the loss of baron de floor the bahamut toad line is pretty much just like invaluable right uh, you still want to set up a negate and this is probably like the easiest way to do it so you got to play three and then you know with revolution synchron it's a really good synergy card because it's level four which means you have your level seven access uh it's, it's just you have to play three it's easily the best starter in the deck uh then to go with our three tournaments rhino hearts you play the three tournaments cast tira still much like Reinhardt, you have to play three uh, on normal or special summon. You get to mill three cards on the top of either your deck or your opponent's deck. Ideally, you're pretty much always going to be doing your deck just because uh, milling your opponent's cards can sometimes backfire pretty hard. <laughs> and then when it's sent to the graveyard, you get to mill two more cards. Uh, then to go with those, we're of course going to be finishing off our tier limits engine with the one ofs, being the one of Merly, the one of Havness, and the one of Sharon. Not much to say, you know, they each mill three depending on like if you're able to meet their criterias. Um, and then, of course, they all fusion summon, which it's a tier limit deck, so you will be fusion summoning a lot uh, throughout your combos. Then, uh, the honorary tier limit cards being the two, Kestira Fenrir. You can play three, you can play two. Sometimes you can even justify playing one if you really need the space for something else, but I think two is probably like just the perfect amount. Uh, it's literally just there to put a body on board, threaten your opponent, and then uh, search out to your cash as well. Uh, like I said earlier, unfortunately, we no longer can do the Revolution Synchron play, but... Uh, it's honestly fine, you know, because even though we can't synchro with this into Baron and then provide us provide ourselves with like free fodder for tier cash, uh, it's still just as always like a threatening body that your opponent has to eventually deal with. So yeah, two Fenrir, perfectly fine. And then for the final honorary tournament cards, you have the one Keldo and the one Medora because shufflers are good and there's still a lot of really, really strong graveyard decks in the format. So just being able to hit one of these and either disrupt your opponent's plays or recycle your resources is just invaluable. Uh, now, for our, the newest change that the deck actually received, we can play three Destiny Hero Malicious now. And um, I love it. <laughs> they should have never gave me this card back because it just does so much, right? Uh, even in this version, for example, uh, it just it provides you so much fodder for your Beatrice lines. It makes it so much easy, easier to actually be able to summon Beatrice. Uh, your Synchro plays become a lot more easier too, thanks to Revolution Synchron pretty much being able to come back and always or almost always ensure that it can make like a level seven, for example. Um, and, and then we are playing some other cards as well to just, yeah, this card's great. <laughs> uh, if it does get hit by like the list again and goes back to two, it'll probably be our fault. I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> but yeah, three Malicious, I must have now. Uh, and then for the other cards, we're playing two of's, Beast King of the Swamps. So since we don't have access to Baron the Floor, that means a free slot has opened up. And what better card to put back in than Tournament's Rokolos? Uh, it was pretty much like our original way to be able to stop cards that special summon themselves, such as Nibiru. And uh, it's just a really fantastic card. But since Kid Colossus is banned, that means we have to play Beast King of the Swamps to be able to special summon it. Um, if you want to play King of the Swamps, it's okay. But I definitely recommend Beast King of the Swamp specifically in like the Synchro version just because it has a lot more synergy with Revolution Synchron as it's also a level 4 monster that you can just normal summon Synchro for 7 and then do you like your Visas lines. And uh, on top of that, since it's a water monster, you can overlay it with your Rhino Hearts to make Bahamut Shark Toad. And uh, yeah, th this version or this specific card does way more than the original King of the Swamp. 
and um yeah, I, I just really like it. But two is more than enough for it. And then speaking of Revolution Synchron, we're of course going to be playing two Revolution Synchron still. Um, even though we can't make Baron with it, that's perfectly fine. We still have the Ancient Fairy and Tavisa's play. And um, just being able to like set up a Synchro monster pretty much immediately, then mill another card is pretty invaluable for this deck because we love milling. So yeah, you got to play the two Revolution Synchrons. And then for the Synchron monster that I added back into the deck, we're going to be putting Jet Synchron back in. Uh, this card's actually really important, especially now that Malicious is at 3. Uh, because Malicious is at 3, that means it's going to be in your hand a little bit more often than you'd like. And uh, just having Jet Synchron as like an option to be able to discard the Malicious, for example, and just get it out of your hand is pretty good, right? Because it sets up your level 7 plays pretty much instantly. Uh, you just go activate Jet's effect, discard Malicious, you put the Malicious in Grave, you activate your Malicious, and then boom, you have an instant level 7 Synchro monster that you can do something with, and then if you have like a Revolution Synchro, you can take it one step further, because let's face it, you're not always going to have this card in your hand, but you are going to pretty much always have access to it in your graveyard, because we are milling a ton of cards. So, uh, and then off of that, you can just make your level 8 for Visas, and then search out any tier limit card that's a spell or trap. Uh, but yeah, it, it yeah, it's, it's, it's just a really solid card, especially now that Malicious is back at 3. And then for the final tuner, we're still playing the one Destrudo, the Lost Dragon's Frisian. Um, what can I say? Uh, again, <laughs> Baron to Floor Band, so you can't just automatically copy any level 4 and then synchro with any level 7. But that's also perfectly fine because we still have a lot of other uses, right? It's literally the Swiss Army Knife of the deck. It can pretty much fit any mold that you want it to be. If you want it to become level 6, you can copy your Jet Synchrons and your Revolution Synchrons when they come back from the grave, and then you can overlay for Beatrice. Uh, it can become any level 7 synchro monster. So as long as you have like a level 6 or lower monster, it's literally always going to equal to a level 7 monster. Um, you can use it for Link Fodder, you can use it for Fusion Fodder, it literally just does it all, so you still have to play the one. And with that, that's the monster lineup, and now we can finally move on to the Spell and Trap portion. Now when it comes to the Spell and Trap lineup, it's basically still the same, and the reason for that is because nothing happened, right? So, <laughs> uh, the most of the changes came from the fact that we lost some monsters in the main and the extra deck or gained some, uh, but even so, you still gotta play your three Primeval Planet Pearl Rhinos, because it's in addition to like Reinhardt, it gives you access to your best starter, I guess, because it searches any tier monster, it boosts all your tier monsters and your fusions by 500 attack, and then on top of that, if a tier monster is shuffled back into the deck, you get to pop a card. Uh, it's just, it does everything, much like every modern field spell, there's no reason why you shouldn't be playing three of it. Uh, then, to go with our three Primeval Planet, you're going to be playing three Terrellman Scream, this is pretty much like the epitome of the ultimate backup plan, because even if your mills are mediocre, uh, as long as you have tier limit scream plus a tier limit monster, you can always drag into your opponent's turn, and then if you're able to mill three more, all your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack, which, uh, even if this card leaves the field, once this effect is resolved, it still continues to apply, so it's pretty solid, and then... And also, it's able to add a trap card from your deck to your hand. That's a tier limit trap, obviously, uh, when this card is go when this card goes to the grave. But uh, yeah, you pretty much always want to open up some combination of like Scream, Planet, or Rhino Heart just to be able to try and get your engine going as consistently as possible. Uh, and then for the final three of, we're going to be playing three Super Polymerizations again. So this is a card that I honestly was losing interest in in the previous format just because the best deck being Snake Eyes honestly didn't lose to it. And that's because their end boards are typically like Appaloosa plus Savage Dragon plus Formula Synchron and Flambridge, which you couldn't do anything to. Uh, as they all have different attributes, they all have different types, you just, you pretty much couldn't do anything. And then once they negated your stuff, they just go straight into Baron and then you'd have to deal with that. Because, uh, and then you, you still couldn't out it because Baron, Flambridge, and Appaloosa also means that Super Poly doesn't do anything. However, with the Baron and Savage being banned, this card is pretty good again <laughs> especially because they're definitely gonna have to go more to like the fire king variant once again and the fire king version has a bunch of I guess, like fire types right and as a result that means it's gonna be a lot more easy you're gonna have an easier time basically being able to super poly them and just break their boards more naturally so um uh, yeah this card just really really good and even so like in the future there's a lot of decks too that just kind of crumble to super polymerization like Ubel, which is going to be really popular uh they tend to set up a bunch of all dark boards or uh tempai which i believe is also an all fire deck but i could be wrong on that one uh and even something like voiceless force right uh sure they can do certain combos to get their resources back but uh after you super poly them once their grind game is basically gone and all you have to do is pass or push through one negate to pretty much just like win the game so yeah Triple Super Poly, really solid. Uh, then, for the two ofs, we're going to be starting off with two Triple Tactics Talent. 
Uh, when it comes to fire decks, their main end board has like no real Omni negates. Typically, they only have the Appaloosa. So once they negate something or use any monster effect, you just talents, take their Appaloosa, and then you kind of just like steamroll them if i'm being honest because uh, apo does so much against this matchup and being able to just take their apo is just invaluable and then just in general right if you're going first this is going to be a very very hand trap heavy format from what i've seen because tempai can play like 15 hand traps fire decks can still play 15 plus hand traps uh even voiceless voice roughly like 9 to 12 hand traps um yeah, so whether you're going first or second, this card is surely going to pop up at some point. Uh, then we just play a bunch of 1-0s being the one Foolish Burial Goods, the one Foolish Burial, and the one Terlemus Grief. They all basically do the same thing. Uh, send Spell or Trap, and then it's typically going to be Soliac or Chibi Karma, which in turn gives you access to your monsters. Uh, Foolish Burial to send any monster, and then Terlemus Grief to essentially send any monster as well, <laughs> as long as it's a tier limit. And then for the final spell, we're just playing the one Instant Fusion. Uh, since this is a Synchro variant, I really like Instant Fusion still just because it means that you have a little bit more flexibility with your plays and you don't necessarily have to open up a level 4 monster every single time, right? Uh, you can just open up the Instant Fusion and you can go for your level 7 Synchro with your Evolution Synchrons. Or um, say, for example, your Rhino Heart gets Impermed, uh, that's perfectly fine as well because then you're going to activate Instant Fusion after that, summon your Mud Dragon, and then you still have a Bahamut Toad line. Uh, this card is just, it's really cool with this flexibility, even though we don't have cards like Kick Colossus anymore to summon off of it. Uh, it still does so much for the deck, and I think it's very much warranted to be at one, at least in this version. And then that's it for the spell lineup, and then for traps, uh, you just have the two Soliac and the one Tribute Karma. Not much to say, you know, pretty straightforward, like I said before. And with that, that's the spell and trap lineup, 40 cards like always, and now we can finally move on to the extra deck. Now, as far as the extra deck is concerned, even though we did technically free up one space, it's still incredibly tight. So you're not going to be able to play everything that you want. Like some of the cards that you can try out that I'm not going to be able to showcase in this deck profile are Appaloosa, which I think fits better in like the more uh, Exceed heavy variants, uh, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, uh, Cypher and Lord Omega, you know, things of that nature that just can rip your opponent's hand, recycle your resources, also provide you with more monster negates that you can try out. But for the purposes of this deck profile, we're just not going to do that. I just wanted to like briefly mention some of your other choices that you can try out. Uh, but yeah. I guess first off, we're going to be starting off with the Link Monster, so we're going to be playing with the one Cross Sheep. I still love this card. I think it's so cool, just because it has so many different effects. Um, obviously, we're pretty much always just going to be using the Reborn effect when a monster is summoned to a zone, it points to, or and then um, it points to like a fusion or whatever. You bring back any level 4 or lower monster from your grave. Uh, this is really helpful at helping you get back like your tuners, such as Revolution Synchron or your Jet Synchron, or even like your Rhino Heart, for example, right? Uh, some of the times you're just not going to be able to open it, so you mill it at some point, and then as long as you're able to bring it back with Cross Sheep, you can still make your Bahamut Toad line or just uh, any type of fusion monster axes that you may want. Uh, I, I just love cards like this that allow you to pretty much be as versatile and um, as free as you want, I guess, <laughs> because they allow for you to do some really creative things. So yeah, Cross Sheep, definitely staple still. Uh, then you play the one IP Masquerina, whose only goal was to special summon SP Little Knight. Uh, not much to say, you know, good cards are good. You play your Toad line, which has been mentioned throughout this entire video. So you play the one Bahamut Shark with the one Totally Awesome. And then for the final Exceed Monster, you play the one Beatrice Lady of the Eternal. Um, what can I say? With three Malicious, this card is easier to make than ever. Uh, and, and there are a lot of situations where I find myself Tribute Summoning Malicious the hard way just to be able to have easy access into this. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's, it sounds crazy, but... Um, yeah, three malicious makes this card even better, and this is literally the god card because it, you just attach one and then you activate the effect to basically do anything you want. So yeah, Beatrice also phenomenal, and then we have our super poly targets being the one mud dragon of the swamp, the one Garuda wings of resonant life, and the one Preta plant dragon stapelia. Just good generic cards to summon out super poly, and even without the super poly, you're still going to be summoning them pretty frequently just because that's how your engine operates. Uh, you're playing the one destiny hero dangerous. Also, you know, it gets malicious into the grave. And even if, like, you hard draw two, right? You can still fusion summon one away uh, and then keep the other in hand, discard it for this, send your malicious that you fusioned away. Um, and then you can still make Beatrice. It's not a brick anymore. You can actually do stuff. <laughs> now, obviously, if you draw all three, you're probably going to lose, but that's a different story that's going to happen to you at some point. I'm not going to lie. It's just the nature of the card. But, um, we're just going to pretend it doesn't happen <laughs> and uh, pretend that this card is just the GOAT. So yeah, one Destiny Hero Dangerous, and then you have your tier fusions being the Rule Coloss, which is 
pretty much like an auto include now just because we have to find different ways to be able to stop nibiru since we don't have baron i know beating a dead horse because i've said that a million times already this profile but uh just because i've said it countless times does not make it any less true and you have the one kaleido heart to just break your opponent's board and that's it for the fusion monsters and then we just play three synchro monsters uh we're gonna be playing fa don dragster again this is an old card that i used to profile in these types of decks and um i still love it you know Destrudo plus any monster means you can make Don Dragster every single time, and it's a free spell in Trap Negate. Uh, all you have to do is lower its level by two, and uh, you get to negate a spell or trap once per turn. Sure, it loses attack and defense, but it's honestly whatever. And then there are some like really niche scenarios where you can just summon this, and then pr it provides like a spell in Trap Negate, right? And then for some reason, it also pierces when it attacks, so uh, it can help you go for game in certain scenarios. Uh, then <clears throat> you play the one Ancient Fairy Dragon. This is going to be like your basically just your basic Visas line. Um, Revolution Synchro plus any level 4 monster makes this. And then with that, you just make your Visas and Ritara, which in turn searches out any single spell and trap that mentions Visas Starfrost, which just so happens to be every single tier element spell and trap. And with that, that's the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!